Greetings and welcome back to my plant tipple. Today I'm going to be showing you how I propagate my plants in water and how I transfer them from water to Leica clay pebbles. To begin, let's propagate. First thing we're propagating is this Monstera Swiss cheese. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the different nodes and then I am going to cut just below the node if I am holding the vine up, like it's climbing up the tree, I want to cut below the node. Next up is this pothos. And here we have two vines that need to be cut so that they are no longer dangling below the cabinet. This is where I previously cut the plant but as you can see, it kept growing. Let's see if I can get the broom without hitting the plant. This is a silver satin pothos, one of my oldest plants. This is not only one of my oldest plants, it's also a plant that I've propagated four times. As you can see, the vines are pretty long and it's time to propagate it again. It's longer than I thought. Last time I cut it, this is where it was. This plant was grown from the propagations of this plant. This is a skindipus or skindapsis, depending on how you pronounce it. It looks a lot like the silver satin, but they are not the same plant. I made that mistake early on in my gardening journey. I've been trying to get my silver satin to grow really big leaves, but it wouldn't do it because it's not that plant. The reason why I cut below the node is because vines typically will grow up a tree. And as they grow up the tree, they are putting out a new leaf and a new node as they grow up. Well, when you cut below the node, it tells the plant to continue to put out plant up. But when I cut above the node, what I've found often is that the plant stops growing here and I end up losing this piece anyway. When it comes to cutting below or above the node, what I am saying is cut where you can take the node with whatever your propagation is because something is likely to grow out from this node that will support the entire vine. Whereas when I leave that node on the main vine, I've found that it typically dies away and is not as useful as the second node. The last thing we're propagating is a lemon lime philodendron. Now that we got our vines, it's time to get them ready for water. So what I'm gonna do to each vine is go to the bottom of the vine where I've cut it, make sure that I take away the leaves that are at the bottom of that vine. And I wanna make sure that there are at least three nodes to go inside the water. If I feel like I need to cut an extra leaf or two, I don't hesitate to do that. It really just depends on the vine and the size of the container I'm gonna be placing the vine into.
This one, I don't even need to cut. It already has enough nodes to go in water. I'm gonna turn this long vine into multiple propagations that are smaller. So, same technique. I'm going to make sure I have enough nodes. Thankfully, I have some leaves here. It's important to have a leaf. We'll cut just below that node. These are all the leftover leaves. I compost them. Now, as you can see, I have three different containers with lots of different propagations. Time to fill them up with water. So that's it for my water propagations. Now we're gonna move on to Lyca. So this propagation has been sitting in water for almost five months. As you can see, the roots have started to grow out. And what we're going to do is move them into Lyca and add water to that so that the roots have something more solid to grab onto. I've done this for several plants and it makes for both a very pretty planter watching the roots grow, but also a very good technique to help your propagations transition into something more substantial as you're going to move in the direction of soil. Step one, sterilize your lica. That means I put the lica into a pot and I add boiling water for at least two or three minutes to let the lica become sterile. I drain the lica, I let it cool, and then I move on to step two which is adding the propagation and the lica into the planter. Now I gotta let the roots fall where they may. That's actually what I gotta do. Sometimes as I'm adding lica to the jar, I'll add some water as well to help the lica settle. It makes it easier to help the plant and the lica come together. Step three, fill it up with water. And step four, enjoy. Thanks for joining us for a plant temple tutorial on propagation. Don't forget to check out how to grow and I'll see you next time.